Each year, two millions of people in the world suffer colon cancer, the second most deadly that exists and more and more frequent among us. And the big problem of this illness is that it is known for being silent and is going to give us few signals that besides often we ignore what is going to make that many times we diagnose it too late. But if there is a cancer in which I am going to really make a difference if I know its symptoms and the best way to prevent it, that is colon cancer. Only by finding it in time, 9 out of 10 people are going to survive. So today, we are going to see what symptoms should alert us that we might have colon cancer. And then we will explore what natural measures, according to scientific evidence, are going to help us reduce to the maximum our probability of suffering this frequent and deadly disease. We know that our colon plays a very important role in digestion and absorption of nutrients, as when food arrives from the small intestine, the content is still liquid. It is then when the colon is going to take charge of absorbing the water and salts to dry and form the feces. The problem is that sometimes, over time, small lumps called polyps form on the wall of our colon. If we don't detect them in time, they can slowly develop without giving us symptoms until they start to grow in an unorganized manner and become cancer. Thus, colon cancer can remain silent in my body for months or even years. However, there are a series of symptoms that I need to be aware of, as they will alert me that I might be suffering from this disease. The first symptom of colon cancer is changes in our bowel movement rhythm or consistency. This includes having episodes of diarrhea or constipation that last several weeks. If I usually have a bowel movement every day, and suddenly I'm going for weeks, doing it every three or four days without having made any change in my diet, or if, on the contrary, I am usually constipated and have been having liquid stools every day for a month. These changes should not be taken as normal and should put us on alert. The second symptom is inexplicable weakness. Experiencing several weeks without energy, finding basic daily activities more challenging without any clear explanation, such as having an increased workload or poor rest at night, is a warning sign. I might also find myself paler than usual or losing weight involuntarily. This happens because cancer requires many resources to survive and expand, so it will steal nutrients from me to continue growing at my expense. Therefore, a situation of unexplained fatigue or weight loss that lasts for several weeks should raise my alarm, and it would be advisable to consult a doctor who can examine me and request tests. These will first consist of a blood test that can give us indications of cancer, such as anemia with low hemoglobin or iron levels. The third symptom we need to be aware of is blood in our stool, as seeing blood in our bowel movements is never normal. It can be due to hemorrhoids, a polyp, but also due to the presence of cancer in my digestive tract, more frequently in my colon. This blood can be bright red, which indicates it comes from the end part of the colon or rectum, or it can appear black and tar-like, suggesting its origin is higher up, usually in the esophagus, stomach or duodenum. It will have that black color because it is blood that has been digested along the way. Furthermore, it might happen that I see blood in my stool for a week and then they return to normal. However, this does not mean the problem has been resolved. Any lesion can bleed for a few days, heal and then bleed again. Therefore, any episode of blood in the stool should be a reason to consult my doctor. Just by taking this step, I will be doing a great deal for my health, as we will see later. Fourthly, we have rectal tenesmus, a symptom that involves an urgent and frequent sensation of needing to use the bathroom even when there are no stools to pass. We might also experience a continuous feeling of not having completely emptied after going to the toilet. All these sensations can be caused by a tumor in the colon or rectum because it continuously stimulates the intestine's receptors, sending false signals to the brain that we need to empty it. The fifth symptom is persistent abdominal pain. Having a pain or discomfort in my abdomen that does not subside for weeks with cramps, flatulence, or discomfort that is not easily relieved should make me suspect that something is not going well. In these cases, it can be due to a tumor that obstructs the intestine and blocks the normal passage of feces. What is going to cause me to feel bloated or have constant cramps? It can also hurt my liver in the right and upper part of my abdomen. If the cancer has spread beyond the colon, since this organ is usually the first target it heads for, so any persistent abdominal pain, whichever side it is on, should alert me that I need to act and get a checkup. The sixth sign that can occur, especially in very advanced situations, is that we feel a mass in our abdomen. And it is that large tumors can form a palpable mass with the hands. This sign is not so frequent, but it can happen in tumors that have had time to grow. In addition, 
any obstruction of the colon by a tumor is going to lead to the accumulation of feces and gases, and that the area is felt as hard and extended with that mass effect to the touch. Now, before I tell you what the most effective measures are to prevent colon cancer, it's crucial to know who is most likely to suffer from it. First, people over the age of 50, although it's true that we're seeing increasingly younger people affected. Second, those with a family history of colorectal cancer, especially if our parents had it, and particularly if they suffered from it at a young age. Another factor is following a diet rich in red and processed meats and low in fruits and vegetables. On the other hand, we also have sedentary lifestyles and obesity, or habits like smoking or excessive alcohol consumption. And finally, having previously found polyps in the colon, or suffering from diseases related to this type of cancer, such as ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, or familial adenomatous polyposis. So, how are we going to prevent colon cancer? First, we have diet. A diet rich in fiber, vegetables, and fruits, with plenty of whole grains and legumes, while avoiding red and processed meats, will help us avoid this cancer. In fact, a plant-based diet reduces our chances of suffering from any type of cancer by 15%, and this decrease is even greater if we talk about digestive tract tumors like colon cancer. We also have regular physical activity. The exercise we can do within our possibilities will help us prevent any type of cancer in various ways, reducing our inflammation, improving our immune system, and insulin sensitivity. But in addition, exercise is especially effective against colon cancer because it improves our intestinal transit while combating overweight and sedentary lifestyles, two direct causes of this disease. And on the other hand, eliminating toxins such as smoking, as well as excessive alcohol consumption, has been shown to prevent colon cancer. Now, the most important point for protecting ourselves from this cancer is going to be undergoing screening tests starting at 45 or 50 years old. The tests that we will see at the end of the video are going to be the only ways to timely detect and remove any precancerous polyps before they turn into cancer, or if this has already happened, to detect the disease early. Therefore, once we know the measures to reduce the chances of developing colon cancer, it's important to remember that if it is found in time, 9 out of 10 people who suffer from it will survive. Thus, as important as following the health habits we've seen. It's essential that we know and undergo the necessary tests to detect it in time. The first test is the blood analysis, which can give me indications of cancer if I have a hemoglobin or iron low, that is, an anemia, or if I have the liver enzymes elevated, which could indicate that the cancer has spread to this organ. This test is not as useful as the other two that we are going to see, but still, it gives us a lot of information, and it is the one that generally is done first. In second place, we have the search for occult blood in feces, the most economical and effective tool for detecting cancer early, since if I have a polyp or a tumor in my colon, this could not bleed very abundantly, which would make that the blood is not going to be seen at plain sight, being little quantity and being hidden in the feces. And it is precisely here where the occult blood is going to be of great help, because it detects this type of imperceptible bleedings. And in third place, we have the colonoscopy, which is going to be the most important diagnostic measure since, after all, it allows the early detection and removal of polyps that, if not removed, could have led to cancer. This test consists of inserting a camera through the rectum and making the entire journey of the colon, looking carefully, that there are no lesions, and when a polyp is found, it is removed so that the pathologist can analyze it later. Now, depending on the country from which you are watching, the protocol for the prevention of colon cancer is different, but the recommendation is that we perform an occult blood test in feces every two years starting at the age of 50, and earlier if we have a family history of colon cancer. And I must know that if the occult blood test is positive, then the next step will be to perform a colonoscopy to look for the bleeding lesion and analyze it. Of course, Testing positive in the occult blood test in feces does not necessarily mean that I have cancer, but it is essential that if it were to happen, I undergo a colonoscopy to rule it out. Now, regarding the treatment of this disease, it will depend a lot on how advanced it is and the location of the tumor, and it may be necessary to use chemotherapy or radiotherapy if the cancer is advanced. But surgery remains the cornerstone and main treatment. And the important thing here is that it can be curative without the need to do anything else if we have managed to find it in time. Something simpler if we take into account the measures we have explained. In conclusion, colon cancer is a serious global health problem. 
and knowing what the key symptoms are that should alert us and what measures we can implement to prevent or detect it in time will undoubtedly make a difference and may help us all ensure that this disease takes fewer and fewer lives each time. And with this, we reach the end of the video. If you found it useful, remember to share it on WhatsApp with your contacts and you help me a lot if you subscribe and ring the bell so that YouTube notifies you every time I upload a new video.